do 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 good morning afternoon or evening wherever you might be in time and space kenny is here and uh today's first noob flight will be uh the air traffic control using atis and adjusting your altimeter all right let me uh close these windows out turn this on and then you got to slide this bar over in obs and it's supposed to make the transition now you should see what I'm saying. Okay, so we are flying towards Colorado Springs. All right, and um, now I need to move this little slider here, and I can show you Sky Vector at the same time. So I want to land uh, at Colorado Springs. Well, I'm set to land at Colorado Springs on runway 35 and we're going to do an instrument landing uh, a little bit later in another episode but I'm starting at this point so this is where I'm going to be setting up for all of the next couple of things alright so we're going to be landing here and I need to get the elevation on that so I hover over that right click and uh, I can pull up probably the general elevation from this map diagram and down here is let me move this and zoom down here is runway 35 right so in my flight planning that's where I have a setup to land okay that's on a heading of 352.3 so that's how they get their uh, runway numbers so if you know, you're like, how in the heck do I keep a, keep track of all these runway numbers? It's pretty easy because they're they're going in the direction. So that is uh, 352. So runway 35. This end is 17. Eh, close enough. Yeah, 172.3 degrees. So runway 17. All right, uh, elevation, right there. 6,103 feet. So, yeah, I can check my gauge and make sure that, uh, you know, as I'm coming down, that I keep 6,103 feet, or roughly, uh, in my head, right? Well, at least you know it. So, uh, let me close Sky Vector. But, you know, what if, uh, oh, I've got to do this little slider. What if you're altimeters not set right and you you think it's set right so when you get there and you're looking for 6100 feet you know it it's wrong so you know what if it's off by 100 feet you remember die hard that's kind of what they did the the terrorists remember they they sent a signal to the computer and it made him crash the pilot come in and land he saw the runway 300 feet higher than it than it was so what they did is they sent a signal to the altimeter if I'm not mistaken again I'm I, this I'm a noob and I'm trying to explain this for others like myself who are really wanting to learn flying you know but sometimes it's a little hard so can another noob explain it to me yeah okay so they sent this signal to the altimeter let me zoom in here do a control one for instruments and I'm gonna zoom into the altimeter so their fancy computer sent a fancy signal to their altimeter and it changed these numbers right here 29.9 29.8 and it has to do with atmospheric pressure yada 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 so how do we know this is right and this knob right here the altimeter calibration knob says we're set at 29 point nine three in HG I don't think that's like HD but okay so again this is a noob course you want to go find out what HG is you know that's that's uh, what you want to do you want to be inquisitive okay well I get the concept now let's go find out what HG means but not right now okay we need to make sure that this number's right 
So, there's an airport nearby. We could probably tune into Colorado Springs from here. But what you want to look for is a major airport. Because the major airport will have an ATIS. And I couldn't really tell you what each letter stands for there either. But the concept is, is they're going to give you that number. They're going to give you a whole bunch of information which you'll eventually learn how to decipher. But what we're listening for is this number. Okay, so Pueblo Memorial is close. Those are other strips. All right, so let's tune. See, they offer an ATIS on 125250. Now, we can go over here and we can plug this in. And you should get in the habit of, of making sure that you learn how to and half the time be doing it and the other half of the time just you know cheat as long as you know how to find it and how to do it if you know absolutely I can come over here and I can yeah sure I could change the I could change the comms all day all right nice uh, once you can do it then start relying on your automation over here to just tune it that frequency so what is it it's uh one two five two five oh right so now I've got to get into the habit of remembering how to use this older one. And once I'm done using this, I'll, I'll load up another plane with a G1000 in it. There's other uh, Garmin or uh, flight director stuff out there that, that I don't know how to use. So I'm going to start with the ones you'll see on planes that you and I would get if we're training for the first time. So it might look something like this. All right. That's automatic squelch. So we are looking for, aha, there's a knob. Push, switch selected standby frequencies between common and VLOC, by, uh, I guess when you push. Let's see here. Are we getting a number change? We are. 125250. 125. And then the inner knob is supposed to do those numbers, yep. So we're looking for 250. Hawaii 50. Okay, 250. 125, 250. Now, we've dialed the radio station in. That could be Ken Radio, for all we know. Think of it as a radio station. It's not more complex than that. It's, it's, it's a radio station. All right, but it's not active. We've just dialed it, but you still have to make it active. It's, it's a little step upgraded from the one in your car. <clears throat> so the one in your car, you just dial it, and hey, there it is. They don't want you to do that here. They want you to use this button. So we've just set it into standby. And we want it active. So when you do that, it'll open up. Okay, now here comes the chatty stuff. I'm going to close my mic for a minute and try to turn the audio up so you can hear. what It'll repeat, so don't worry. Temperature 6, 2.13. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 2. ILS runway 26 left and visual runway 26 right in use. Landing and departing runway 26 left and runway 26 right. VFR aircraft, say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact, you have Quebec. Pueblo Airport information, Quebec 2000 Zulu. Wind 261 at 14. Visibility, Niner. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, 6. 2.1 tree. Altimeter, 2 9 or decimal 9 or 2. Okay, did you hear that? Altimeter. Right in use. So, we'll, we'll wait for it again. That's what we're listening for. He gave us the altimeter right. number. VFR aircraft, say direction of flight. All aircraft read back I think it's 2 9 or 9 or 2. That's how they speak. 2 9 or 9 or 2. Pueblo Airport Information, Quebec 2000 Zulu. Wind 261 at 14. Visibility, Niner. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, 6. 2.1 tree. Altimeter, 2 Niner, decimal Niner 2. Okay. ILS it is. 2 Niner, Niner 2. Right all right. So Landing that's really we, all, all, all we really need it for. Right. So if we go back, it should stop it. And there's, again, you heard a lot of great information in there about the Pueblo 
uh, airport about ILS don't know about them. We were just listening for the altimeter. Pueblo Airport Nine information, Quebec 2000 Zulu. Wind 261 at 14. Okay. Visibility, Niner. If you go back Second out and the clear. ATIS is still talking, you have to tune to something else. Or let's just put it back into standby. As you move Pueblo around, yeah, I switched it back. Zero, 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 See? Now he's the active station. Visibility. Switch it off. Okay. He's he's in the background. There's other ways to mute him, I believe, but uh, you get the idea. Okay. So, 2, 9, or 9, or 2. And we know that we're off. Not much, but we're off. It said we're at 2, 9, or 9, or 3. Now, as you move around from place to place, this number can change. And I mean, it can change quickly. Like between here and Colorado Springs, which is 40 miles, there can be a difference. Uh, some days when the weather's all crazy in your area, the more that you get used to flying around, and you should. Set yourself patterns and fly every day. Get up every morning, I gotta fly, I gotta fly. Make it easier on yourself. Set a pattern. They're only gonna let you fly like 50 miles in any direction or a specific, a specific area in your town anyway. So it's great to be able to explore it. Uh, to be able to explore in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But, you know, get yourself into a, a training routine. Get up, oh, I know my radio station's around here. Tune to that one, tune to that one, move to this one. And on uh, as the weather gets really bad in your area, fly again, fly again. Get used to the weather in your area over and over again. And on weird days, you will, as you move around and start extending out 50 to 100 miles, you'll hear the the, uh, the eight has changed the, uh, the altimeter setting, and you, you know, so be on it. That could mean crashing into the ground or not. So that's all there is to it. What I need to do now, if you have a Garmin, so that's it in one of these steam gauge plates right there. All right, I think we got it. I think you got it. That you got it. Okay, good. All right. So let me uh, exit out here. To the main menu and for the most part it should it probably won't save that radio stuff and i'll i'll do it again um for my ils but in the main menu here i've set up kind of that run i've saved it to the point where i've got colorado springs set as the arrival airport so let me load it here so you, i don't know that you can see my loading screen but do, do, do. Well, it's not, it's not showing me my my thing, man. It should it should have shown me it. Let's try it again. Load, save, load. ILS to KCOS, open. Okay, well, it's not that far off that I can't set it up again. But, uh, 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 there's KOS, uh, KCOS, runway 35 right. And it's probably not important for this lesson, but it's got me peeved. That seems to be working today. We can set a, a start point out here in the middle of nowhere, not clicking on any particular icon. Okay, that's what we should be saying. All right, let me get a different plane. There's the Skyhawk with the G1000. That would be the next plane that they would give us, or by the way, they'd eventually give us one with the G1000. So it's the same concept. We're, you know, let's just assume right again, it's still going to be two, nine or nine or two. So let me just show you how to change it. To, if it's not at two, nine, nine, two, when we get in there, I'll show you where to, what button to rotate. Do, do, do. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying these. I've, I've, I've gotten some nice feedback from folks. Um, one, turn off the music. Yes, I've turned it off. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, other people asking questions, and I'm sorry I can't answer them all, especially when it comes to troubleshooting. Like, well, why isn't the the manual cache working? I, you know, I, I couldn't answer that. Why is it grayed out? Check your options. I mean, that's the, 
It's the best we can do. All right, let me pause this. Okay, we'll assume it's 2992. It's this button. Let's see if we can zoom in. It's this button right here. So why it doesn't say out, you know, and it just says a uh, push CSR, CRS, CTR, and it centers the CDI on the currently selected VOR, which is I'm sure handy. I really, I really never really used it for that. But the outer band, it doesn't say adjust your altimeter. It says decrease barometric pressure, which is what that number ultimately is about. The barometric pressure number. So it's this outer ring. So as we loaded in this time, it gave us the two nine or nine or two. But that's it. That knob right there. So, we know it's 2992 out here in Pueblo, and the closer we get to the uh, Colorado Springs Airport, then you want to log in. You know, you want to get listen to the ATIS from there, and make sure that between here and there, it didn't change. If if you're sitting on the runway and you've just started up, gone going through your checklist. If you don't know checklists, we'll do that later. And you're starting cold, or either way, you're sitting and parking your taxi. Always do your ATIS first. It's just a good procedure. So again, using that diehard story, you know how they how they sent a signal into the computer that changed the barometric pressure, causing the altimeter number to change. dramatically they convinced that airplane that the runway was several hundred feet or you know I don't even I don't remember now the scene exactly I'd have to watch it again exactly how many feet but that's the concept they made the airplane think that the runway was higher than it was and they smacked into the runway and blew up and John McCain was very angry as were we all All right, um, I think the next one I'm going to do is, I want to knock out some quick ones and easy ones, like EGT, and uh, leaning the mix. So, we'll see which one I do next. And then we're gonna get to the ILS. We're gonna be big pimping. Uh, I'm going to, hopefully, it's still tough. It's something you're gonna have to practice and you're probably gonna fail at a lot like me and that's using the instrument landing system. We want this thing to take it all the way down to the runway and line us up perfect for a landing and then we'll switch off the autopilot and lift the nose and come to a landing. So let's say it's complete low visibility and we can't see a thing beyond the window. You can't see the runway. You need the computers to do some Star Trek stuff and we're gonna learn how to uh, how to do that Star Trek stuff in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now I, I have been successful in X-Plane, but here it's been kind of hit and miss. I tried last night and uh, 36 minutes into giving you, a, giving you a tutorial on how to do it and I botched it twice, commanders. Twice. So I'll get to that soon. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. If you like what I'm doing, please, you know, hey, me a heart and, and a subscription that helps so i appreciate it have a great day and i'll see you in the next one